The objectives of this module are to introduce the typical prototyping steps taken to develop a design, provide examples of each type of prototype, and discuss resources available to you for creation of prototypes. There are several things you should know up front about prototyping in new product development, things I wish someone had told me early on. First, you won't get it right the first time. Second, so you need to fail early when it's cheap and easy to correct. And third, your prototype will have issues, and that's okay. If it doesn't, why did you waste money building the prototype in the first place? Based on these lessons, the key is to fail fast and fail early. But how do you fail fast and early? You test the bits and pieces as soon as possible, is the answer. This is pulling verification activities forward and micro-reviewing the design before the final design review. In most new product development projects, there will be multiple iterations. The typical tools used during those iterations are renderings, mockups, engineering prototypes, prototypes, pilot production units, and final production units. Let's look at some examples of each in the hopes that it will spur some ideas for how to develop your project. Our first round of prototypes are usually actually renderings and sketches. Now when I say rendering, many people think of the extremely carefully developed concept rendering shown. An image like this can take days to construct and clean up, and often requires skills in image editing software you may not have. But renderings and sketches don't have to be beautiful to be useful. These are communication tools, and may include things like this hand sketch that was then colored by an artist to show how a handheld weapon would be loaded and how the handle would deploy, or this quick CAD image capture of a medical device. There were no guts or details in this CAD model. It was a roughly hacked out shape in SolidWorks that was meant to convey the overall concept. Or this overlay of the outline of an old product, shown in red, with the new version of the same product, shown in green. Don't wait on this. Get sketches of your ideas in front of the team and stakeholders as soon as possible. Sketches and renderings answer questions like, what will it look like? Will the parts fit? Where does the fill in the blank go? Put your ideas in front of your customer early. Even straw man concepts are hugely valuable to spark discussion and save rework down the road. Mockups, often called prototypes, are great for clarifying fuzzy requirements or look and feel issues. Mockups are typically non-functional and can be made easily from foam or cardboard. I've even seen effective early use of erector sets and Legos for creating mockups. Shown are very early high-density foam mockups of a wireless car charging station that was used to get a feel for the actual size and perception of pulling up to a charger in a parking lot, versus on the right an extremely refined and painted foam mockup of the same system. The mock-up on the right even had a battery-powered LED setup embedded so that the indicators would act realistically. Low-resolution 3D printing can often be used to create good mock-ups as well. This 3D print of the overall profile of a proposed weapon was weighted with fishing weights so that the potential users could get a feel for the ergonomics and balance of the device before too much time was spent developing the internal mechanisms. And don't underestimate the effectiveness of a good old-fashioned cardboard prototype. This cardboard prototype of a biohazard decontamination device allowed the feasibility of using the backpack in a hazmat suit to be tested before any significant design work had commenced. Having a few mock-ups early in your meetings or at your preliminary design review will accelerate your progress towards a great final product. Once you get into more detailed design, it's important to pull forward testing of high-risk elements of your proposed solution. Engineering prototypes are meant to test functionality. They aren't intended to be pretty necessarily, or be complete representations of your final design. Some examples of engineering prototypes include this air dash pot that was zip tied to a board and used to test and then demonstrate the idea of using a dash pot actuator in a complex medical robot. Physical testing the function of a dash pot drastically increased both team and client confidence in this approach and saved a huge amount of time that might have been spent trying to simulate similar actions. Or this 3D print of a surgical tool. The concern addressed was, will this mechanism pinch or cut surgical gloves when used? Rather than attempt to simulate this or leave it to chance, the 3D print allowed us to quickly verify with user testing that the device would not pinch the gloves of the nurse and move forward confidently. One final example of an engineering prototype is this light board. Created to test different LED types and lens configurations so that the final look of a consumer product would be just right. Again, while there are optics programs that could have probably determined this analytically, sometimes it's more effective to simply build and test an engineering prototype. And finally, there's a full prototype. These are the prototypes that most people think of first. They are near production ready and can usually be tested with much, if not all, of the verification tests that the production units will be expected to pass. 
This is probably, hopefully, where your senior design project will end. But if you've taken anything away from this module so far, I hope it's this. It isn't where your senior design project iterations should start. As you march toward production of a product, mistakes get more expensive by orders of magnitude. That's why the expense and time of early prototyping is worthwhile. Catching an issue with the design at the mock-up stage is often almost free. As mistakes creep down the line, they cost more and more until fixing a production mold may take 12 weeks and tens of thousands of dollars. So think about your project and have a plan for pulling risk forward. Have a plan for getting input on your design using mock-ups and different types of prototypes throughout the project. How does this all fit together, you ask? Let's look at a typical design process. This isn't the approved senior design process. I hope you'll use it for ideas and suggestions, not as the rule of the road. Every product requires a slightly different path to prototype and production, so try to give your customer a pretty picture at the least. Most projects can usually justify a mock-up of some sort. I believe in the idea of three sprints to prototype. In round one, you render it. Flesh out the system architecture and concept. Start putting some of your ideas into CAD and assign locations to the external interfaces. You can begin wrapping the concept in surfaces, rendering it and presenting it to the client to get fast feedback. Round two is mock-up creation. You're getting more detailed in your design at this point, and you've updated your design based on feedback on your renderings. You may be making internal engineering prototypes in the background at this point, but you're using mock-ups to present your ideas to the client, and design reviews are a great time to show them your latest thoughts using mock-ups. Round three is sprint to a full prototype. Always have a peer review internally in the team before you run towards a prototype or release for any prototype parts. How are you going to test your prototypes? If you don't have a plan for testing your prototypes, then you're not ready to order prototypes. Remember that a prototype's only as valuable as what you learn from the prototype itself. Let's look at a couple of examples. If you've ever used a Keurig coffee machine, this is what their process looked like in pictures. They started with rough sketches and renderings before creating a foam mock-up that they used to collect user feedback and marketing input. In parallel, they had developed a rough engineering prototype to prove the concept that you could brew coffee with these small pods. This engineering prototype was used to develop process controls and critical settings experimentally. Based on that engineering work, they continued to refine and present both their mock-ups and their engineering prototypes until they were able to combine everything into one fully functioning prototype. For this less than lethal weapon project, the process looked very similar. Initial sketches were turned into foam mock-ups to test ergonomics. In parallel, and inside CAD, a packaging model was created to make sure that all the necessary parts of the proposed system could fit in the size being proposed. Early 3D prints were created and weighted to test and refine soft factors such as ergonomics and balance. In the end, all these pieces were brought together to create a fully functioning prototype of the proposed device. As you begin prototyping your project, don't forget to take advantage of off-the-shelf or modified off-the-shelf solutions. Don't create custom housings unless required. Consider project boxes or pelican cases instead. Use resources like 8020 to quickly prototype support structures for custom equipment. And don't be afraid to post-machine existing hardware to make it an exact fit for your project. Similarly with electronics, don't underestimate the power of available development kits and prototyping tools like Arduinos and BeagleBones. That said, don't overestimate their capabilities either. Most solutions will require a combination of these off-the-shelf solutions and custom circuitry, so plan accordingly. Also, don't get locked into the idea that everything must be either hand-created or done via only processes available on campus. Go talk to the people at material suppliers like Alrico for aluminum, Colorado Plastics, and Dincol for steel. Sometimes they have scrap available at a discount, and sometimes they'll be able to point you towards a better prototyping approach. Also consider using water jet cutting vendors to quickly cut flat panels. And there are many rapid prototyping technologies beyond those offered on campus. So do a little digging and learn about techniques like cast urethane. Good luck on your project and happy prototyping. Before closing this module, please answer these quiz questions.